Welcome back guys to Unit 11. We're going to be talking about assets and bases today. And we're going to go over some of the basic concepts of this unit. So the different topics and chapters are Topic 10 from the Orange Regents Review Book. And for the Honors class, you guys should be reading Chapters 15 and 16. We're going to be talking about the facts on assets and bases. We're going to also visualize the pH scale. We're going to talk about what electrolytes are, and then we're going to describe Table K and Table L, so please make sure your reference tables are handy. So acid, which is the Latin word for sour, is a chemical substance whose aqueous solutions are characterized by their sour tastes, by their ability to turn blue litmus paper red, We'll be talking about litmus paper and indicators in a later lesson. We'll also be talking about later in a lesson how they can neutralize bases to form salt like sodium chloride or ma uh, magnesium chloride and how they react with certain metals to form salts and also release hydrogen gas. Bases are chemical substances whose aqueous solutions are characterized by slippery when you touch them. They taste a little bitter. They're going to change color of the red litmus paper to blue. They're going to neutralize acids to form salts. And finally, alkaline, alkaline earth metals make basic solutions. So that's why we call them alkaline solutions or alkali solutions. Now, when we say that they are slippery, most soaps have a basic function to, or basic uh, pH to them. So looking at our idea of acids and bases, we'll use this line to represent everything to the left that's an acid, everything to the right that's a base. And we'll know that these items, because they have either a sharp or a sour taste, or they actually have the ability to burn you, these things are what we call acids. While anything over here is going to be more slippery, a little bit more thicker to the touch, and these are your bases. And they, though our solutions, they have very, very, very different properties. For example, all the acids have the ability to burn, while all bases are what we call caustic. Though they're both chemical burns, one of them has the ability to eat through metal, while the other one has the ability to make your skin slide right off. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Okay, so here's the pH scale. We tend to say everything that's closer to the zero is, an, is a very, very strong acid, while everything close to the 14 is alkaline. Where they meet in the middle, which is at seven, we say that is neutral. So some of the compounds and acids that we're going to be dealing in class, uh, for example, sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. We have hydrochloric acid, HCl. Acetic acid is HC, uh, HC2H3O2. We also have carbonic acid found in soda, which is H2CO3, and boric acid, which is H3BO3. So if you've ever heard that scenario of putting a tooth in soda and seeing it rot and decay, Mm -hmm. It's because the acidity of the carbonic acid is around 4.7. So these are all of our acids that we might be using in class or in questions. As Ms. Dimakopoulos said, we know that 7, which is right in the middle of this number scale, represents neutral, and that's what pure water is. Pure water is classified as a 7 or a neutral solution. And everything to the far right, going from 7 and above, that's where we're going to have our bases. So we have, for example, copper hydroxide, zinc hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. They all sound very similar. Yeah, they all end with some very interesting, you know. Ending. Polyatomic ion. Yeah, right? polyatomic ion. I wonder which one that is. <laughs> well, I, I guess you can assume, looking at all these compounds, that all acids start with H, wink, wink. <laughs> and all bases end in OH. Ta-da. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> A strong electrolyte is a solute that almost completely ionizes or dissociates in a solution. So all those things that we said were salts that dissociated in the water, those are strong electrolytes. Ions are really good conductors of electric current in solution. HCl, um, sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide are all strong electrolytes because they're able to conduct an electric current in the water because the ions have separated and now the electric current has something to bounce around on. But when H2SO4 dissociates, does it make sulfur ions and oxygen ions or does it stay polyatomic? Uh, polyatomic. Ooh. So if we have a weak electrolyte, this is going to be something that does not completely dissociate. So sometimes an insoluble compound will make a weak electrolyte. 
So these solutions will both contain ions, so positive or negatively charged particles, and molecules, which are like sugar, but these are going to be big things that haven't broken down. So some examples of weak electrolytes are like acetic acid, which is vinegar, carbonic acid, which is the acid found in soda, ammonia, which is also found in Windex, are all examples of weak electrolytes. Non-electrolytes do not break down in, into ions at all in water. So sugars, fats, alcohols, those are going to be examples of non-electrolytes. Other examples when we get into organic chemistry could be things like methyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol, or even simple sugar, glucose. All of these are non-electrolytes. So using your reference table, it's all fine table K. Table K is going to be great for you guys because this is where you're going to see a lot of the formulas and names for different types of common acids that will be asked on the regions. Looking at this list, we can categorize which is weak and which is strong by the very simple rule. Everything on the top, HCl, HNO2, HNO3, H2SO3, and H2SO4, are all what we call strong acids. Everything beneath sulfuric acid, which is phosphoric, carbonic, and ethanoic, otherwise known as acetic acid, are all classified as weak acids. My, I suggest that you guys write these down in your reference tables. Look, it's so crazy. Look, it just burns through it so easily. Why sulfuric acid does that? Pretty crazy, right? Right beneath table K, you have table L, which are again, these are going to be some of the common bases that you're going to find on your regions. So everything again on top, which is going to be our sodium, potassium, and calcium hydroxides, these are going to be your very strong bases, because when they are placed into water in aqueous solution, they completely dissolve. However, aqueous ammonia, which is NH3, does not completely dissolve, therefore we call it a weak base. So as Mr. Schoner just said, when they dissociate, the amount of dissociation that's able to happen, um, it's going to create either a strong acid or a strong base, and on that pH scale, that's how you can really truly identify strong and weak. So if you have a weak base, then I assume it's going to have a very big number? No. A weak base is actually going to be closer to number seven, just like a weak acid would be closer to number seven. Oh, so like a weak acid could be like a 6, yes. and a weak base could be like an 8. Yes. But a strong base could be like a 13, and a strong acid is like a 2? Yes. The further we get away from water, the stronger it becomes. Oh. So thinking about solutions and how soluble compounds are, we notice on the left we have two different beakers. We have one that has high solubility, and one that's got low solubility. The high solubility means it's going to have a soluble aqueous compound, while the insoluble is going to be most likely a solid. But if we notice in the picture, even though it's a solid, there are still some ions or molecules floating around. Even reference table F says that insoluble just means very low solubility. Which doesn't mean that there's no ions. If you notice on the right, now we're showing the different charges. So if you notice on the far right where you have those blue spheres, those are supposed to represent non-electrolytes, while the beaker in the middle, which represents the positive and negatives and shows the non-electrolytes, that's supposed to be your weak electrolyte solution. So that would be something like acetic acid with positive charges and mo molecules. And we notice the strong, everything has a charge. Everything is completely ionized. Again, just thinking about this, if you were to drop hydrochloric acid into water, it will completely dissociate into its ions. But if you take carbonic acid, which is H2CO3 on the right, it's a weak acid, and as we said, it doesn't completely dissociate. That means sometimes the molecule remains intact, and sometimes it will split apart. Okay, so here you see uh, three different pictures of three different scenarios, and you see the light bulb. Uh, when you have a non-electrolyte, like the one all the way to the left, there's no ions, so there's no current that's able to flow through the water. In the middle, there's a few ions that are present, so the current is able to bounce around in the water, which allows the light bulb to light up. And then finally, the strong electrolyte all the way to the right of this, uh, there are many ions available for the current to bounce around on, allowing the light bulb to really brighten and shine. So when people say you can get water poisoning, which is when you have too much pure water in your body, 
think about your brain responding to your muscles or your heart kind of like an electrical current. If you have too much water from drinking too much, you are kind of resembling the picture on the far left. Your brain is not going to send signals and your body's not going to respond and that's what can get sent you to the hospital because that's very dangerous. Yeah. Drinking lots of fluids when you're doing sport activities, for example, like Gatorade, because we all know that's got electrolytes, that. yeah. you would see yourself more on the right-hand side. Right. That's showing good conductivity and allowing your brain and your muscles to respond properly. At the end of a football game, what do they throw over the coach? Water? Yellow stuff. Yellow stuff. A lot of big burly dudes and yellow stuff. Definitely not water. Yep, definitely not water. Our body's an electrical system. We need the electrolytes. Without it, we die. Next. So just for reiteration, guys, if you are a strong acid, a strong base, or you're an ionic salt, that means you're a metal mixed with a non-metal, which is ionic, that means you're a strong electrolyte. And if you're a weak acid or a weak base, you are definitely in a weak electrolyte. Okay, so this is what you should have learned. We talked about the general properties and facts of acids and bases. We showed you guys a visualization of what is acidic and what is basic. We also talked about what is strong, what is weak, what are non-electrolytes. And we also used the reference table K and L to identify strong and weak acids, which can be very helpful for quizzes and tests and labs. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a nice night.